Designers from Envision, Microsoft, Nintendo, and even Adobe lean into data analytics to make better and more informed decisions. Now imagine being able to watch how every single user interacts and engages with your product or platform, knowing exactly what they click and how they navigate around your website. In gaming, we call this God mode. All right, all right. So on a more serious note, all of that I just said is actually true. Can you remember a time when your client or manager tells you how to design because of their own beliefs? Maybe because they have read an article on which color button converts the best. Now, the biggest mistake designers make when product designing is that they don't truly understand the context they are working within. So no evidence, no facts or supportive collateral to justify their decisions. Well, those days are over. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step on how to use the world's leading tool to proving stakeholders wrong and also helps you become the best designer you can be with Hotjar. Now Hotjar is the sponsor to this video and I could not be happier because this tool is a tool that I have personally used throughout my entire career. Now obviously Hotjar cannot grant you three wishes and make the impossible possible, but with a simple line of code on your website or web app, it can collect a lot of information that can help you make more informed decisions as a designer. So let's dive right into Hotjar and take a look at what this tool can provide you. Now, as you can see, I am logged in with, into my Hotjar account and with Hotjar, you have access to two types of data. You have recordings and you have heat maps. So we're gonna dive into heat maps first. And when you have the tracking code implemented on your website, you can then hit new heat map and this will pull through all the pages that the code is actually on. So let's just say we wanna take a look at the UX case study presentation template. As you can see over here, when you open up this page, it pulls through a visual representation or the actual screenshot of your website, and it will actually show you how many clicks and where people are clicking and the proportion. So in terms of percentage, what is the actual percentage of people clicking on specific elements on the page? Now at the top, you can see that we have a filter, so we can filter through what the time frame is gonna be. So out of all the sessions that have landed on this actual page, we only wanna see the last 30 days, or we can do the last 12 months, or even up to the last 24 hours. Now you can also add additional filters to then add more criteria to the, all the different sessions that are landing on the page itself. So we can only showcase the sessions that have also landed in the last 30 days and have also visited a specific page. We can then also define them by sessions, filter them by sessions. We can also filter by behaviors, user attributes, different technology criteria, feedback, and also experiments. So sessions coming through Google Optimize, which is a free A-B testing platform by Google. As we scroll further down, we can actually start to analyze and make better design decisions based on the visual feedback and the visual data that we've got. Now on the right, bottom right hand side, you can also toggle between tablet and mobile view. And the most powerful thing in this heat map is that we can also take a look at where is all the movement with the mouse. As you can see, a lot of movement happens in the navigational area. As they scroll further down, we can see there's more movement around the CTAs. We can scroll further down. There is some level of movement around the video and then also the download for free CTA over here. Now, as you scroll further down, there is some interesting things that we can also pick up. Now, after taking a look at this page, this is a free template that we give out at the designership. And if you scroll all the way down to the footer, you can start to notice that there is probably a little bit more movement around the free resources, which makes sense because someone came to our website for a free template, what else would they wanna be looking for? More free stuff. So you can see that it does validate and it does showcase more logical decisions throughout this entire heat map. Now, the last type of uh, showcase that we can represent in this heat map is scrolling. Now, you can see that with the red, it shows, it goes from red all the way to yellow, green, and blue. And really, what this is showing us is like what percentage of viewers of the sessions are scrolling further down on the page. And we have different breakpoints at 75%. And then you can see the proportion of people scrolling 50%. And then the proportion of it getting all the way down to the bottom of the page. So this visual data really helps us make more informed decisions. Now, the second piece of data that we actually get access to, which is the probably the most powerful one, are live recordings of an entire session. 
So when we click into recordings, you can see that we can once again filter all the sessions based on the last 30 days. Now we can also go ahead and add an additional filter based on what page people have landed on. So let's say as a founder, Mizco, the founder of the designership have, we've hired you to actually go ahead and redesign our Figma Masterclass landing page. We want more customers. We want to increase the conversion rate. So we can actually go ahead and go to Hotjar in, in over the last 30 days, we can then filter by landing page and we can type in Figma Masterclass and we will take 255 recordings and it will bring it down to 53 recordings, All right? If we increase it to 30 days, you'll be able to see that it will increase the recordings to 2,801 recordings. Now from here, the most powerful thing is that we can now dive deep into an actual end-to-end -end session, right? So we can go hit play and this will open up the entire session and we can actually watch how someone interacts with our landing page in a real life scenario. Now the difference between user testing and this is that in user testing, the user is actually in a engineered scenario. So it's not real. You are sort of tasking them to do specific things. This is a real life scenario over here. Now at the bottom, you can see that you can also increase the recording speed. So if you're watching through an entire session, it's taking a little bit longer, you can increase the speed. You can also toggle on and off the all inactivity skipped. So what this means is that if I turn that off, it means it will play through the entire session. If I turn it on, whenever there is inactivity in the session, it will skip to the next part. So you can really skim through everything that's most important to you. Now in the middle, you can also save specific parts of this entire session as a highlight. It's really powerful if you are working in a larger team and you are actually tracking how users are using a new feature that you might have designed and shipped. You can notice that if you notice there's a little bug that the user goes through, you can actually tag it as a bug. You can also tag it as a UI UX issue and you can also tag it as confusion, frustration, conversion and success. So you can really utilize these clips and reference them for later. And you can also keep them all in one place. It's extremely useful if you are working on larger scale projects. Now on the far right, you can see that Hotjar also tracks all the different events that happen throughout this entire session. So you can actually go ahead and scroll all the way down and find a specific click of a button and actually jump straight to that specific part of the entire session. Now, as you can see, a lot of this data can be so useful, but if we think about it, how do we use this in a more practical sense? So here is an example, right? So let's just go over to our Figma Masterclass page. And once again, Mizco, myself, the founder of the design ship, I've hired you to go ahead and redesign this Figma Masterclass landing page so we can increase our conversion rate. So really, if we didn't have access to any user research or any feedback form or anything, we can then go ahead and take a look at this page and we might hypothesize something, right? Because whenever you are optimizing a design for conversions, you need to create a hypothesis. In other words, what do you believe is happening? Now, as someone that's been teaching Figma for quite some time now, I will hypothesize that a lot of students or designers want to learn a bit about design systems, but not just design systems for the sake of it, really trying to understand, okay, if I build a design system, how does that interact with the rest of the project? What does it actually look like in a real project, right? So I might then go ahead with that hypothesis, with that belief, I'll go into Hotjar, I then might go into relevance and find maybe 10, maybe 12 different sessions. And then I might actually just go in and watch a number of those sessions. So here is an example, right? I found one session and I'm gonna hit play. This user landed on the uh, Figma Masterclass page and you can see that they go straight to the curriculum. And I can start to see that they've opened up welcome, project management and design systems now. And they've spent a little bit more time on the design systems section, right? Doesn't give me the answers to what I need specifically, but it gives me some level of understanding of what people are doing. Now I might then once again, open up another session just to help validate my hypothesis. And I might hit play as they're going through the page. I can start to watch what is actually happening with a real visitor of the website. So they open up welcome, they open up Figma project management. They're taking a look at, at it right now. They've also opened up design systems now. 
and they're spending a little bit more time on this section, as we can see. And then you can see they scroll further down. They're looking through the different parts of the website. They're scrolling further down. They're clicking through some photos. They might just trying to see who is this guy that's teaching uh, Figma and they're going through the website. Now I might go to another session now and just start from the start, hit play. And you can see they go straight to the curriculum. They're looking at the curriculum right now. They open up design systems first, then they open up project management. And then you can see that they open up design systems again, spending a little bit more time here, looking through all the different topics that we talk about. And then they're still reading something on this section. They're finding this more, as you can see, they're opening up more and more sections, Figma components, responsive design. This person is really trying to understand what's in the course. They open up project management once again, and they open up design systems once again. Now, as you can see, this information does not give me three wishes. It doesn't give me the exact answers of what I need, but this is evidence that can sort of support my case. Now, if I have a hypothesis and I'm starting to see that some of the evidence is sort of showcasing that or at least informing that my hypothesis might be somewhat true, I can then go ahead and design solutions where I might showcase more screenshots of the design system section. I might even showcase and unlock a few free videos around the design system section and ultimately just bring more transparency into the design system section. And we might even showcase more of the testimonials of students talking about what they learned in the design system section and how it helped them become a better designer. Now, once again, these examples are very basic, but as you can see, you can start to see how Hotjar with this level of data, it can really help you make better and more informed decisions when you were designing solutions for your product. Now, what makes Hotjar even more powerful is that it provides more advanced users an event API. So this means that you can actually send data from other platforms to Hotjar's events API to really track the entire process of sequences of events. So for example, if a student landed on the landing page, they clicked through a few things. They actually clicked on buy. They made the payment and landed in the actual academy to actually do the course. I can track that entire process, even though the visitor has gone off the website and into the actual academy itself. Now, if you want to learn more about Hotjar, make sure to check the link in the description and you can always get started with a free trial. And I will see you guys in another video very soon.